Wargamers. Today we have our second of three Army List reviews that are marking my ramp up back to normal video production. Um, so if you're not familiar with my channel, this is something I do for my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, if you are one of my patrons, you can send me your Army List. I will tweak it, review it, and uh, spit out a new version at the end. Um, so of course, you can find this army list as well as revised version over on my Facebook page, uh, link in the description below. But yeah, so let's get into it. This is a army list from Jake. It's a 2000 point kind of all comers list. He's looking to do something that's not super spammy, um, but still build in some redundancy. So having multiple units that can do similar things, but um, not just uh, having the same unit repeated multiple times. Now, some of that has been done for us because of the you know, rule of three that's been implemented since I've received this army list. Yeah, this it's, this army list is a little bit older than the rule of three, but still um, now that we're conforming to the rule of three with the new FAQ, uh, we don't have as much temptation to go into that spammy territory either. So, uh, all right, so let's get started looking at this original list. It's Jake's first Tau army list. Um, that has been submitted here so it's a it's a rough draft it's you know just starting to get into 40k and kind of feel it out so um yeah so let's start with the first attachment um the first attachment is a tau sept detachment uh tau is one of the better septs in my opinion i really like it uh it gives you the overwatch on fives which can be a really powerful tool uh in the right scenario of course you don't want to overemphasize uh the sept tenant here just because um you know having the ability to overwatch on fives is great but you don't want to get over, you don't want to be charged in the first place so it's kind of great if you need it but try not to use it type of thing um so yeah there's there's that uh starting with hq we have a counter fire blade again this is going to be a great choice for um a tau sept detachment because you're going to get that uh marker light on a five instead of on a six uh, plus, he's going to synergize really nicely with infantry that are going to be hitting on fives anyway. If you get the uh, marker light on there, you're going to be re-rolling ones, hitting on fives, and that gets you pretty a, a pretty good um, output in terms of Overwatch firepower. So those two together go really well. It has a pure triad engram neuro chip, uh, which is you know one of the best um, relics or signature systems in the codex. So I, that's great. That allows you to uh, re-roll uh, a die and not have to use a command point to do so. Um, you can do it in addition to that command point re-roll and it allows you to siphon uh, command points off of yourself and your opponent. So uh, that's a really great economy uh, or utility signature system there. Uh, the other thing there is that now with FAQ uh, and battalions giving five command points that's that's less necessary but does it's still good you still need command points and you can kind of cycle through and um, use all sorts of things that you wouldn't otherwise use like emp grenades moving on to a cold star commander it has four fusion blasters great loadout um, you know four fusion blasters on a cold star is going to combine mobility and firepower it's great as it allows you to work around the um, first turn deep strike restriction that's now in place and having vectored maneuvering thrusters I think is actually a really important part here because with the restriction on deep striking you're no longer going to be able to deep strike drones in and so having the vectored maneuvering thrusters means that you can uh, zip up 18 inches away from whatever you want to shoot at and then uh, jump backward um, to get out of out of range or you know, at least a little bit further away from the scary enemy unit so um, having that vector maneuvering thrusters, I think, works out really well, and it's a good selling point for the Tau Sept with a Cold Star uh, Commander. And then finally, we have Dark Strider. Dark Strider is the Pathfinder special character. He has the Fighting Retreat ability, Structural Analyzer um, ability as well, and both of these things together uh, make for a really effective infantry army. Uh, fighting Retreat allows you to um, still still shoot if you fall back although honestly a lot of times if you are getting into close combat you are not getting out of close combat uh meaning you are going to be dead um but if you do make it out this gives you some nice utility you know you always hit you know, a lot of times i'll have you know one or two fire warriors make it out and so i can kind of pluck away a little bit at the enemy with this um and that that can help especially if there's just like one guy left you don't want to you 
just having that one extra fire war shoot at the one enemy guy can can make a difference. So I like that um, structural analyzer. This is the the real selling point, and that allows you to add one to wound rolls for a tau sept in infantry within six inches of dark strider, and uh, that's huge. That's a huge improvement from the index where it was just treating the toughness as lower. Um, here we're adding one to wound rolls, which makes a huge difference because it essentially doubles the strength of the weapon in, in some, you know, in some cases. So that's huge. Um, that that makes a big difference, and it means that if you have a big blob of fire warriors, they're you know wounding toughness for things on twos instead of on threes, and that's a nice that's a nice uptick in output. But more importantly, it means that Things that you'd normally wound on sixes, you're wounding on fives, and things you'd normally wound on fives, you're wounding on fours. So that's a 50 and a, um, or I guess that's a 100% increase in output moving from a six to a five, and a 50, or yeah, a 50% increase in output moving from a five to a four. So yeah, that means that means that um, you know you're just that much better. Uh, so imagine like if you brought, you know. A unit of, of 10 fire warriors that was benefiting from this uh, if you're moving from a six to a five it's like you brought 20 fire warriors um, that makes that makes a big difference uh, so yeah dark strider he's a great great component to an infantry based tau sept detachment uh, so to go with dark strider and with that cadre fire blade we have three strike teams they are all uh, 10 man units they have a shazui um, and uh, they have pulse rifles, yeah. I mean, not not a whole lot to say there. This is a great start or a great backbone to this uh, infantry detachment. Moving on to the next detachment, we have an outrider detachment. Uh, this is for concept, uh, meaning that your rapid fire and heavy weapons have an additional six inch range. Uh, the HQ here is an ethereal on a hover drone. Hover drone, I don't think is necessary. Um, a lot of times, he's he's just not going to be that. You don't need them to be that mobile. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but if you have five points, sure. Um, and then the Pathfinders uh, for fast attack, we have a Pathfinder team. It's eight Pathfinders with a Pulse Accelerator drone. That's a lot of Pathfinders in in one unit. Um, I I would tend to kind of skim them down a little bit. I don't think you need eight Pathfinders in a unit, and um, they just I would rather have two smaller units than one larger unit when it comes to Pathfinders just because they, they die pretty easily. And if you have um, two smaller units, you are going to be able to uh, use their scout move a little bit more effectively when it comes to, to board control. Um, there's another Pathfinder team uh, with seven Pathfinders, so that's 15 Pathfinders. That's a ton of Pathfinders, uh, especially in a list that we already have. Um, our character marker light sources. We don't really need this many pathfinders. Uh, and additionally, with the pure tight engram trip and increased command points, we're going to be able to explode our marker lights pretty consistently uh, and get five marker lights on high priority targets fairly easily. So, yeah, I uh, I don't think that we necessarily need this many pathfinders. They do have uh, pulse accelerator drones, which is going to work out um, nicely for um, other other fire warriors in this army list. Uh, it gives them plus six inches on their um, pulse rifles, which means plus three inches in their um, rapid fire range. And you can stack that with Borkan, and you can use that uh, with things like like a cadre fire blade and um, the focus fire stratagem for the Tau Sept. Uh, yeah, so. Lots of utility there. The, the one downside is that the Pulse Accelerator Drone creates its own um, creates its own unit, and that is just a really easy kill point. So there's that. Here we go. Finally, we got the the, the window to pop up. Um, I'm using Battlescribe for this, by the way. Uh, on the last video, there was a request to give a little bit more information on what I'm doing. This is Battlescribe. Um, and I'm I'm hoping that the screen recorder is picking up these pop-up windows, but if it's not, apologies. Um, so here's here's a pop-up window, hopefully uh, showing you a little bit more about Pathfinders and the Pulse Accelerator drone. All right, then uh, kind of the the cornerstone of this list is two Ivara battle suits. Ivaras are fantastic; um, they are going to do a whole lot of work for you. And let's see, 
Yeah, this is this is a Borcan sept, right? Yeah. So Borcan Evaros are fantastic because it it, it extends the range of that flamer um, critically to um, but 14 inches instead of just eight inches, which is huge not only for Overwatch but also for the general use of it. Um, that works. That combines really nicely with the ability to deep strike it in turn two using the Nova Charge ability, um, escape thrust, um, or escape velocity on, on the Ivara. So this is, having Ivaras that are Borkan are awesome. The one thing here, uh, and you may have noticed this already, is that there are very few drones in this list. And Ivaras are going to be a high priority target. You're going to need to um, pass wounds off from an from an Ivara onto drones uh, pretty regularly, and so drone support is critical for the effective Ivara deployment. Um, and having two Ivaras is a ton of points. That's eight, you know, 824 points of Ivaras, and so that's almost half of your list. And uh, I think this might be a case where we can maybe go down to one Ivara and support it better and actually get a better long-term, um, you know, turn four, turn five outcome than we would otherwise. If you have two Ivaras just by themselves not supported, you might be able to do enough damage in turn one and two to, to prevail, but you also are, you know, playing a little bit more with the dice. It's a riskier strategy. You're going all in on the Ivara, and if you do that, you have the um, opportunity or the challenge of potentially just hitting a hard counter and not being able to overcome that in time. So I tend to be a little bit more conservative in this and wanting to support one Yvara better than having two unsupported Yvaras. All right, uh, next attachment here is a Tau Sept Storm Surge. Um, Storm Surges, I, I'm i pretty lukewarm on them, especially given the number of uh, pulse shots we already have in the list. Um, one of the big draws for, for Storm Surges is their potential volume of fire. And, um, you know, I would rather have a, you know, you have enough fire warriors in here that the cluster rocket system really isn't bringing that much new to the table. The destroy missiles are nice, but um, not, nece not necessarily necessary, especially with the Ivara on the list. Um, and, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just probably pretty lukewarm on, on storm surges. One nice thing about a storm surge is if you put in more can, you can use experimental weaponry and get a little bit more reliability out of those rocket systems. But uh, still, uh, this is an area that I'm thinking we could potentially uh, save some points and redistribute them in a way that's going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more consistent. Uh, particularly if we take those points and put them into riptides, we're going to get, um, you know, two riptides is. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more than a storm surge, but we can use two riptides and get 36 shots um, that are way better than the cluster rocket system, and you know has a lot more versatility than the cluster rocket system and the and the blast cannon and and everything else. So um, taking points out of storm surge, putting them into riptides, I think is probably a winning strategy here. Plus, riptides are two units; they can do more on the board. Uh, they are battle suits. Uh, really important here. They are battle suits, the storm surge is not, and so riptides can use savior protocols where a storm surge cannot. So um, that's that's one thing too. All right, now we have a fourth attachment, and uh, keen observers will notice that yeah, it's it's four attachments, and that's um, not permitted under current match play rules. Uh, you have a, a maximum of three, so we're going to have to you know finagle things some way, anyway, um, to get this down to three detachments instead of four, but nonetheless, this is a Borkan Vanguard detachment. Um, has a fire blade for Borkan, I love it, uh, it's great. Um, especially if you are, are pairing it with um, Borkan Fire Warriors, but in this case, we don't we don't have Borkan Fire Warriors, so that's, that's a, bit, a bit rough there. Um, it does benefit his marker light, which is good, uh, but not not as good as if you are pairing him with a um, pairing him in the forehand sept and with a bunch of fire warriors. So that's that's one thing uh, to keep in mind here. And then we also have three fire sight marksmen. Um, this is the type of detachment that I would actually rather see as Sakia um, or Sakia. You know, again, however you want to pronounce it. 
but Sakia would allow each of these guys to re-roll a miss in the case that that happens. That's really important for the Firesight Marksmen because they um, aren't hitting on twos. So um, you're having a, a higher chance of missing with them, and so having that re-roll makes them you know, pretty darn good, uh, especially for the points. So yeah, I, if I were to keep this, I would transition it into a Sakia Sept um, Sekia Sept Detachment. Overall, I think that this list is, is good. It's pretty well-rounded. There's lots of different things going on. I think there's overinvestment in, in Ivara and Storm Surges compared to other types of units. And I would like to basically make it work a little bit more uh, cohesively. Right now, there's a lot of different parts that kind of move on their own and don't necessarily interact in the way we'd like them to. Um, so with the revised list, I'm going to focus more on um, doing a few things more reliably than doing lots of different things less reliably. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at that revised list. All right, here is the revised list. Uh, we've gotten it down to three detachments and uh, have kind of uh, focused it a little bit more than it was previously, but still trying to keep with the theme of not being super spammy, keeping commanders, keeping Yvaras in the list. Um, these are things that Jake said that, that he wanted. He wanted to keep the Cold Star and the Yvaras. Um, and so I, I did I did drop one Yvara. I feel bad about it. I, I love Yvaras. They are probably my favorite unit in the game. But I think if we want all these things to kind of mush together in a way that that it's, you know, for the greater good and not, uh, you know, each Yvara for himself, I think it I think it makes sense. So I think this gives a, a little bit more functional list overall. OK, so uh, again, we're at 2000 points. First detachment is a battalion detachment in the Tau Sept. Again, I like the Tau Sept. I think it's one of the better ones. We have a Fireblade in here. He still has the Engram Neuro Chip. That's the same. We have a Cold Star, four Fusion Blasters, uh, Vector Maneuvering Thrusters. That's the same. We also have Dark Strayer. So the HQ component of this detachment is the same as it was before. Um, for troops, we have uh, the same same setup for troops. We have 30, uh, 30 Fire Warriors here. This is something where if we wanted to, we could break this up actually into six units instead of three. Um, and throw throw them down into making a different uh, a different battalion detachment because um, yeah so we basically we could pull 15 of these fire warriors out and throw them into a Borkan battalion um, down the line here which hopefully will make sense in a minute if if that's what we want to do but for now if we're focused mostly on just having a big block of fire warriors that can overwatch on fives uh, this is um, this is the way to do it right. Uh, all right, then fast attack. I skimmed these Pathfinder teams down to um, five man units. They still have the Pulse Accelerator drone because, again, that Pulse Accelerator drone has a universal benefit. It's not set specific. So we can use that for, for our other guys. Um, but also having the Pulse Accelerator drone is just kind of a nice, a nice added thing if you have the points for it. Um, but I did I did shave it down to five guys because 15 was a lot for two units. And we have other market light support. Right. The next attachment is Outrider Detachment. That's Borkan. So this is where we could take those 15 Fire Warriors, pull them down here, and make this a second battalion detachment. Um, that would give you more CP and um, you know give you a, some more options with our third detachment too. Um, so it, it would give you more CP, give us more options for a third detachment. And uh, the only downside here would be that you're breaking up those those 10-man units into um, into 5-man units, which means not only do you have to position them a little bit differently, but if we're splitting them between steps, no longer are you benefiting equally from things like um, Focus Fire or the Tau Sept Tenet or anything like that. Um, so you wouldn't have the same type of momentum for certain events, but it would give you a little bit more flexibility. So uh, you could go either way, really. I think it's probably fine as is, though. Uh, that's because that's that's why I wrote it this way, right? <laughs> that 
So it'd be, it would be a bad video if I was like, no, this is crappy, but I put it on anyway. Um, so yeah, I think it's fine the way it is. All right, like I said, four concept, uh, cold star battle suit, four fusion blasters, yeah, love it. Uh, brought the ethereal in. He still has the hover drone because I got to the end of the line here. It's like, well, I got five points, and uh, I, you know, I can't like buy a seeker missile or anything, so I guess it's a hover drone. Um, I could also put a marker light on one of the fire warrior Shazwi or something like that, but we have enough marker lights. We don't, we don't need to do that. Um, it's probably it probably would give you a little bit more redundancy if you did, uh, but I like kind of the simplistic, the simplistic idea of not having either everybody has marker lights or no one has marker lights. It just makes it easier um, to actually play. I think so. Hover drone it was. Moving into fast attack, uh, this is where we scrapped Ivara and started basically cannib cannibalizing him for parts, and we made a bunch of shield drones uh, using that other Ivara. Um, plus, plus some other stuff down the line here. So we have four shield, four, four man units of shield drones, and we have three of those units. So twelve shield drones total. Again, because of the rule of three, that's the total that we could have. I don't, I don't want to take more than four shield drones in a unit because they have really low leadership, and you are definitely going to be losing shield drones because that's kind of their job is to die anyway. So uh, we don't want to have really bulky shield drone units. Uh, then we have the Vara. He's now critically supported by by drones. He needs those drones. And uh, notice I didn't go with like shielded missile drones or anything like that because um, it just shield missile drones are are not going to be your friend in terms of point efficiency. And um, they they're expensive and they're going to die just as easily as normal shield drones. So you might as well go with normal shield drones. Um, we have the advanced targeting system and target lock on here because the advanced targeting system means that that flamer is the flamer and the ionic discharge cannon are both that much better. And target lock is basically, um, oh guys, oh no, I just know something. He doesn't have he doesn't have target lock. He needs a target lock. All right, we gotta go in here. Target lock is 12 points. Oh no, now we're over. Okay, I'm taking away. I'm taking away that hover drone. Actually, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to. The quickest way to make this right is to just take out a fire warrior, which means that if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, there it is. Okay. I took out Fire Warrior, we are back at 2,000 points. If you wanted to split it into the two the two battalion detachments, you can't do that right now, so you'd have to work something else out. But, yeah, so like I said, keep it the way it is, huh? All right, so we have the Ivara. He has the target lock and the advanced targeting system. He needs a target lock because he's, he's meant to move, and you don't want to suffer um, hit penalties on the discharge cannon when you're moving. Um, so 12 points makes a huge difference for him. All right, moving on to the third detachment. It's a Vanguard detachment. Uh, that's Borkan. This is, could also be a um, Vanguard Sakia detachment. So this is where if you turned the um, Outrider detachment, the Borkan Outrider detachment, into a battalion, you could take some of the guys from here, namely these two Riptides that we've introduced, put them in the new Borkan Battalion Detachment, and then just have a Sakia, um, a Sakia Detachment with the Fireblade and then three Marksmen. Uh, but because we didn't do that, we haven't, um, and these Riptides are still in this detachment here. So uh, we've cannibalized that Ivara, we've taken out the Storm Surge, and instead we've gotten um, a lot more support for our battle suits using drones, and we've gotten two Riptides, which, you know, like I said, 36, uh, Strength 6, uh, minus 2 AP if you're taking the Advanced Targeting System, which we are, um, two damage shots, so that's a potential of, um, what, 72 damage um, from these guys. It's, it's quite a lot of damage that you can put out using two Riptides, and... Um, I think they're they're a more reliable source of damage and a more versatile unit than a storm surge. But these guys too are going to benefit from from having those shield drones around. 
and um, are gonna gonna do a lot of work for you. So the Riptides along with the Ivara are going to really be the cornerstone of this this army. They're going to be your heavy hitters and they're going to be supported by volume of fire via your fire warriors. And um, one of the nice things about having these Riptides here is that they are not as short range as the Ivara, so you're still going to maintain pressure um, maintain pressure even if your Ivara is not in close proximity. Um, that's one of the, the really important parts here is that you have reach over the entire board um, between your fire warriors with pulse accelerator drones and your riptides and your Ivara that can move really fast and your cold star battle suits. Uh, you are all over the place and you're able to capture objectives and uh, take out critical enemy units in a way that um, just works. So yeah. Um, hopefully that all made sense. It's kind of a whirlwind tour, but overall I think this list is a good all-comers list. It's not super spammy. Um, at least I don't think it's any more spammy than, than the original list, so that's kind of the, the threshold that we're going with. I think it works out. And yeah, um, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a solid list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think some of the things should be in different detachments, different seps? Am I totally wrong in scrapping the Storm Surge in the second Yuvara? Let me know. Uh, because I like to do these not only to, um, you know, give my direct feedback to my patrons, but also because it's a good starting point for discussion, right? Like some of the best suggestions don't actually come from me. They come from you guys in the comment section. So uh, please give your feedback there. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can find both lists on the Facebook page and there is a link in the description below for that. As always, thanks for watching and of course, happy Wargaming. Hey everyone, this video was made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you like this video, consider heading on over to Patreon and joining our community there. Uh, special thanks to No Excuses Panda, Jordan, Paul Luters, Giovanni DiMaggio, Tao Oswell, Deverson, Jared Egeler, Nick Steele, Max Harrison, and Yuhai Penguin.